Hello everyone! This is going to be the first video in a series, and it's all about my favourite things. They make up the ground we walk on, the mightiest mountain ranges, and the deepest ocean trenches. They shape the world around us, and everything that happens in it. They are rocks. Rocks come in many different flavours, and they are classified based on how they formed. In this video, I'm going to discuss one of the plastics. Plastics? I meant classics. At the border between Utah and Colorado is a place that draws rock ants from all over the world. It lies at the center of a landscape shaped by millions of years of geological turmoil. It's also a valuable window into the lives of spectacular prehistoric creatures. I'm talking about Dinosaur National Monument. Since the discovery of fossil rich rocks here in 1909, it has grown from a barren hill into a multi million dollar museum and excavation site. The animals whose fossils have been found here include giant plant eaters, such as Stegosaurus and Diplodocus, and vicious meat eaters like Allosaurus and Deinonychus. However, this video isn't going to focus on the animals so much as the rocks that entombed them. Fossils are only found in sedimentary rocks, those that are made from sediment. In particular, the rocks that define this landscape are clastic sedimentary rocks, the most common variety. To explain what they are and why they're so important, I'm going to take you back 150 million years to show you how these rocks were formed. 150 million years ago, a mighty river crossed this part of North America. Lush vegetation lined its banks, and dinosaurs drank its water. There was something else in the river too, something carried in some amount by all rivers. That something is sediment. Sediment is loose material like sand, that can be transported across the Earth's surface. Clastic sedimentary rocks are made from the most common types of sediment, sand, silt, clay, and granules. All of these come from the breakdown of pre-existing rocks by physical forces including running water, gravity, or frost. Those forces are collectively called physical weathering agents. I will talk about physical weathering in a separate video, but for now, this is the key point. Clastic sedimentary rocks are made from the remains of older, pre-existing rocks. Now then, the first question. How does loose sediment in a prehistoric river become a clastic sedimentary rock in Dinosaur National Monument? Well, a few things need to happen during this transformation. The first step is deposition, a process of sediment settling and building up in one place. Sedimentary rocks form in basins, where sediments can be delivered and allowed to build up in a pile. These basins are usually underwater, in rivers and lakes, or at the bottom of the ocean. The rocks of Dinosaur National Park formed in rivers. They are filled with rough sand grains and big round pebbles, just like you see in rivers today. By contrast, these mountains in Cyprus are made up of a different kind of clastic sedimentary rock they formed at the bottom of the ocean. If sediment is deposited in the same place over and over again for thousands or millions of years, new processes begin. The first one is compaction. It is caused by the weight of all that sediment pushing down and squashing the sediment at the bottom of the pile. There is so much pressure down there that all the water between the sediment grains is forced out. At the same time, another process called cementation begins. This one depends on special chemicals called cements being present in the water. Natural cements are based on elements such as calcium and silicon, which are normally very common in rocks. As water is squeezed out of the sediment pile, those sediments are left behind in the gaps between sediment grains. They stick the grains together to form a single solid object. In other words, they are the glue that holds the final rock together. To summarize, 
Plastic sedimentary rocks are formed by a combination of deposition, compaction, and cementation. There are many different types of plastic sedimentary rock. Let's look at some of them now, and discuss the differences between them all. These dinosaur fossils were excavated from a layer of sandstone. Sandstone is just what it sounds like, sand turned to stone. We also find fossils in mudstone and siltstone. These are, respectively, mud and silt transformed into stone. Sand, mud and silt are three different types of sediment. Clastic sediments are classified based on the size of the grains that make them up. Sand grains are the biggest out of these three, between 2 mm and 1 16th of a millimeter across. Silt grains are smaller than that, and mud grains are smaller still. For this reason, we say that sandstone is coarse grained compared to siltstone or mudstone, which are fine grained rocks. Not all clastic sedimentary rocks have such descriptive names. For instance, here are two more called conglomerate and brachia. They can both be formed in rivers, and they both contain fairly big pieces of sediment. Can you spot the main difference between these two? In conglomerate, the sediment grains are mostly round. In breccia, they are angular with sharp points and jagged edges. This difference exists because the grains inside conglomerate have been carried a long way down a river. They have had plenty of time to be whittled, polished and smoothed out by the flow of water. The grains in breccia, by contrast, were deposited before they could be rounded like this, so they stayed angular. The big grains inside conglomerate and breccia are collectively called granules. They may be little pebbles just a few centimetres across, or big boulders the size of your head. However, they have been through the same processes as those sand grains from earlier. Their position, compaction, and cementation. I should say that all these processes are quite slow under normal conditions. It can take thousands of years for enough sediment to pile up for compaction to take place, and still longer for cements to bind all the sediment together. Considering this, and looking at how many clastic sedimentary rocks are visible today, gives you an appreciation for how old such landscapes must be. You should now be able to explain how clastic sedimentary rocks are formed, where they are formed, and describe the materials that make them up. Feel free to replay this video if you're unsure of anything, or ask me a question in the comment section below. If you enjoyed this video, leave a like and consider subscribing, it really helps me as an educator. Thanks very much for watching, and good luck with your studies!